Professor Dave and Chegg here, we have defined enthalpy, entropy, and Gibbs free energy, and we know how they all correlate with the Gibbs free energy equation. Now it's time to get some practice calculating delta G for specific chemical reactions. There are several ways in which we can get the standard free energy change for a particular reaction. The first involves an equation we are already familiar with, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. But now we will add these superscripts to denote standard conditions. If we know the standard enthalpy and entropy changes, that will make it easy to calculate the standard free energy change. For example, here is solid carbon reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. If these are the delta H and delta S values, and we are at room temperature such that they are valid, we just plug the three known values into the equation. The only thing we have to be careful with is units. Delta H values are typically reported in kilojoules, while delta S values are in joules per mole Kelvin. It will be a good idea to divide the delta S value by 1000 to make it kilojoules per mole Kelvin, so that there is agreement. Then we just do the arithmetic and we get negative 394.4 kilojoules per mole of CO2 formed as the standard free energy change, so this is highly spontaneous. The second method is essentially identical to Hess's law, just applied to free energy instead of enthalpy. If we know the standard free energy change for several other reactions, if we can combine those reactions to produce the one we want by manipulating them in some way, then manipulating the associated delta G values in the same way will give us the delta G for the reaction in question. This is because free energy, like enthalpy, is a state function. We can see this here with carbon monoxide and oxygen forming carbon dioxide. We can look at other reactions to get the information we need. We have two separate reactions involving the combustion of methane and their associated delta G values. If we flip the first one and double the second one, these will combine to give us the reaction in question, because water and methane cancel out. We must therefore do the same thing to the delta G values. The first will have its sign reversed, and the second one will be doubled. Adding those together gives us negative 514 kilojoules as the standard free energy change for this process. Finally, we can use standard free energies of formation for the individual substances in the reaction to find delta G, just the way we use standard enthalpies of formation to find delta H. We have tabulated data, and we take the sum of the delta G values of the products and subtract from that the sum of the delta G values of the reactants, taking stoichiometry into account. For example, we have the combustion of methanol and some associated standard free energies of formation. Let's plug these into the equation. The products go first, multiplying carbon dioxide by 2 and water by 4, and then the reactants, multiplying methanol by 2, and for oxygen it doesn't matter since it's zero, as it's a pure element. Plug it all in the calculator, and we get negative 1,378 kilojoules. This is therefore highly spontaneous. With that, we know three different ways to calculate the standard free energy change for a particular reaction. The Gibbs equation, combining other known reactions and their free energy changes, and using standard free energies of formation. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.